the team that Bono made. <laughs> uh, yes. Nashville Predators, much better team than I think a lot of people, myself especially, gave them credit for. Almost 50 wins, 47, 99 points, fourth in the division. But the division's a monster, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. And sixth in the conference. But the conference is a monster, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the Stars, the Jets, the Canucks, the Avs, and the Oilers ahead of the Predators going into the playoffs. The Predators played the Vancouver Canucks really tight to the point where Vancouver would win a game and only have 12 shots. That's how freaking... Like, you need to go back and check just the shot counts from the first round series between the Canucks and uh, the Preds last year. It was crazy. And here's what the Predators did. They went out and they added scoring. They can actually score goals, which is something they could not do, especially in the playoffs last year. You've got the Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist line. You've got Stamkos, potentially next to Tommy Novak and Jonathan Marcheseau. Long. <laughs> Rebuilt second line. <laughs> and then you've got your, your bottom six, the, mostly the same as last year. Janikowski, Sissons, Evangelista, Cole Smith, Michael McCarron, who is gigantic. Mm -hmm. He's literally the big... Like, when you play him in NHL 24 or NHL 25, he's just enormous. And then Yuso Parson. And something they also did was they doubled down on what they were good at and got a little more scoring on the back end. Brady Shea, Roman Yossi, Brady Shea being the new addition, Jeremy Lozon, really Alex Carrier, yep. uh, Spencer Statsny, and, of course, Luke Shen. Mm -hmm. This is a team that could defend you to death. Yeah. And then you've got Saros Wedgwood. And a wild amount of uh, friggin' um, assets. Yeah. yeah. There, you, you know, uh, we often on this show talk about one of the biggest deals in recent memory. And that's the deal between the Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames. Kachuk for Huberto and Uyghur. Mm -hmm. Huberto... One of the big factors that we often talk about with that deal had 115 points. He was unbelievable, and Florida had a lot of really high-end scorers that year. Yep. They also won the President's Trophy that year. Who was their head coach? Andrew Burnett. That's right. Oh, yeah. And he's the... Yeah. And you just took that guy. You just took that guy's team that already had Philip Forsberg, one of the most underrated offensive performers of his generation, and you added Jonathan Marcheseau and Steven Stamkos to it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Scary. I think the Central's in trouble. They are a little old in this team. They are a little they old. They are. But they're they all are. sort of, and I say old, they're old together. Like, they're in the same bracket of you want them to be within five years of each other. Forsberg, 30. Stamkos, 34. Marcheseau, 33. O'Reilly, 33. Novak, 27. Nyquist, 35. Uh, Sissons, 30. Uh, Cole Smith, 28. McCarron, 29. Yossi, 34. Shea, 30. Like, this is like this is the get-it-done-now team. Yes, 100%. And all the more reason to spend all those assets you got. Mm -hmm. Jesse, what stands out to you about the Preds? Yeah, I don't think there's a way, like, you could be... If you're really high on the Preds, I don't blame you. I am there's, extremely. There's a lot of reason to believe that this team will be the dominant regular season team and carry it into the playoffs and have their, have a sort of run. Like, they're going to be really good, and it's because of all of the additions and the assets that they have to play with this season. It's, it's an incredible piece of work to not only be in a stage where you have cap space and, and draft picks to play with, but then also have stars on the team. And all they were missing was high-end talent. And that's what they acquired Finish. in Marcia So and, and Stamkos and add in Brady Shea too on the back end. And it's the finishing touches on an already really good team. And my lasting memory of the of the Predators, because the last time they played hockey is 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 2-1 win in game five over Vancouver and then a one-nothing loss yes. against Vancouver. Those what is that? That's that's four combined goals over the course yeah. of two games. Games. Like they already played such tight hockey. Add the scoring, you're great. This should be a great team. The man that Daily Faceoff has lined up as the second line center of the Nashville Predators, Tommy Novak, in 71 games last year, had 18 goals, 27 assists, meh, 45 points. I think that's gonna go up. Oh, hugely. And it's I... gonna go up, and it's it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a lo like oh, yeah. it's not a free space. You know what I mean? Like, not everyone can, uh, oh, yeah, we're just going to put you in a better position with better players, and you're going to do great. Not everybody works with that. I look at a guy like, uh, comparable for Novak, I look at like a Chandler Stevenson, where yeah. if you can do what Chandler did, Chandler is a very good player, but he's not, a, he's not like the star of his generation. He's like a but guy he, you, can, you can have as your first line center. But there better be really good support beneath him. Yes, and I so ideally he's the second. I think Tommy Novak can be that. 
Um, what I what we don't we don't think Stamkos might play some center. He could, absolutely, he can. He'll take some faceoffs. Like, well, no, Novak shoots left, Stamkos shoots right. They could do that thing where they have Stamkos on his strong side. Mm-hmm. Novak. Yeah, that's if, you, that's if you got. Well, I guess yeah. If Stamkos is playing the wing, you have him on the second line. At this point in his career, he's not a five on five center. Maybe in October. Oh, oh. Maybe in October. This is this is why the Preds are so fascinating is because they've become this suddenly. Oh, you got decisions to make at the top yeah. end because you're deep. Yeah, like it's yeah. so good. This yeah. is this is just luxury for the for the Predators here. And you don't you don't got to make those decisions till the spring. I look at the Preds <laughs> and they're one of the weird teams that they've changed so much this off season that you almost really can't. In, in fact, they changed so much from last March onwards or last February onwards that you mm-hmm. can't really look at them and go, well, if we look at their last season comparables, it's it's going to be this, this, and this. I think you got to look at the Nashville Predators as if they are the team that, when they could not go to U2, decided we're going to play good hockey now. And it did work, as much as I hate to admit it. Excellent coaching decision. It was, it seems to have worked. And so, like, I look at their goal differential, just as a, a, a blind stat. Sure. It's a plus 21 I think their goals against were a little high last year. I don't think they're going to be as high this year. I think I think they're going to score more and allow less. And they were already 11th in goal scoring in the regular season last year. Mm-hmm. You also got... I think that's pretty good. You got goalies with something to prove here. Like this Askarov stuff, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be... Yeah. No, it's, it's Soros and Wedgwood uh, have to go in there and be like, F you, this is our league. We're in it now. Mm-hmm. You got to earn your place here. We've been earning it for years. Soros is one of the best goalies in the league, and Wedgwood's kind of an underrated backup. Yep, and has been for a while. Is there going to be enough puck to go around for Brady Shea? You know, this is Roman Yossi's power play team. Brady would, Shea is a puck moving defenseman who's also great. I don't think they're going to be playing together. Yeah, I'd split them up. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously, on the second power play unit. Currently, Brady Shea is penciled in as the guy that's going to quarterback it. But, you know, the talent that he's going to have to work with is it's like Evangelista, maybe Parson and Novak and Nyquist. Yeah. It's going to be tougher for him to put up points here. It's it's funny. Uh, the guy you went with for this is Shea. I had something penciled in is uh, uh, could Philip Forsberg's production take a step backward because there's only one puck. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're so good. They are, and maybe you that's take... going to be a tricky power play because all three of those guys are righties. Well, maybe Forsberg, you don't Stamkos, do Well, maybe you don't do Forsberg, O'Reilly, Marchessault, Stamkos. Maybe you you take a couple of them and put them on the on the second unit and spread the talent around a little bit. Sorry, I only think like my dumb team. Yeah, that just loads it up, and as soon as you can neutralize that, they're useless. Oh yeah, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so I, wait, are you saying they should? Highly recommend. Yeah. Highly recommend. Got it. Jesse, you're looking at something right now. It seems like I'm just I'm just thought. staring at their lineup and the uh, the projected lines that Daily Faceoff had. I was looking at the team on Puckpedia, but I was going over the the lines on uh, defense. Like they they have seven quality defensemen, so there's a decision to be made there with uh, Stastny on the on the lower end there because mm. and Fabro. Like, yeah, where's he going to fit yeah, in? Yeah, you can slot in. I think Dante Fabro probably makes the lineup there. I mean, that could that could potentially be like a uh, like a waiver thing or a, like a a preseason trade mm-hmm. or something. There's a, there's going to be a lot of movement in the Central Division. I yeah. also want to throw out there: How can a team be this good when they have four players with eleven point eight million dollars retained from buyouts? It's wild, eh? So you've got Duchesne, Johansson. Taurus, Kyle Taurus' deal still oh, on the book. Still? And Matias at home for a quarter million bucks. <laughs> uh, 11.805 million. How can they be good? I, I don't know, but they're friggin' good and they're going to get better. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's have a look at the odds. Remember, Nashville last year, uh, and this is key here, Nashville had 99 points. NHL odd makers have them at exactly that with BetMGM. It's either over or under 99 and a half. Hmm. I am diving like Superman and headbutting over. Okay. All right. <laughs> 99? Yeah. Get out of my face. Where do you have them in the division? Um, it's a very, very strong division. Um, I think a lot of people are going to go with the sexy pick and make them number one. I'm going number two. Number two ahead of either Dallas or Colorado? We'll see who. We'll see which one. 
Adam, every time we make picks, it's like you've never, never heard I know, a prediction but it's before. Dallas and Colorado, man. Come on. Number two. Come on. All right, Jesse, where do you have them? Oh, it's so funny. Please say two. Dallas and Please Colorado. Say one. Say one. No, I'm going to go with third place. Oh, sh- um, Boo. But, like, it's it's one under you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's on him. Oh, my that's God. That's fun. That's normal. I just, ah! I, I, listen, I love the... <gasps> I love the Preds. I, I'm pro Preds all the way. But until you've beaten the Avalanche and the Stars in the regular oh, you, season. You don't have them above? No, I have them third. I, Adam, I, what is wrong with you? Why, why would I have them any higher? Oh, you, have, no, you got to hand it back. What do you mean I got to hand were, it back? You were a Preds truther. I yeah. am a Preds truther. All playoffs. Oh, yeah? Okay. No, but you, okay. clear, you don't believe in them. You want me to put? No, to put no, the no. You can't do that now. The only you team they're going to get now. Above, listen, the only team they're going to get above is the Avs, and it's going to depend on the Avs' injuries and goaltending. Okay, I think until the Preds have done it, I think it's fair to have them in third, and I think it's still fair to have them in third at like a hundred and seven to one hundred. You're a fake anyways. fan. They are a fake Preds fan. You know I'm not a fake Preds fan. They, Those are good teams. You're not allowed on Broadway anymore. Wow. You know what I think? What <laughs> you stink. Yeah. Wow. I have them. Uh, I'll hit the over and third. Yeah, that's where I have them. So do you, did you have over under? You, I have them over. Yeah, over. Okay, okay. Yeah. 